Hello, chemistry team! Chemistry coach coming at you with part two of the half reaction method. So in part one, we went over the basic process, we went over the steps, so make sure you have that with you. I promise I'll give this to you on the test, even though you probably won't need it if you do your work properly. And we did one example in basic solution. Uh, now let's do one in acidic solution. Now regardless of the method you use, book you have, basic the basic solution is pretty much the same for everybody. That some people might mix the steps up a little bit. Uh, but an acidic solution, depending on the culture of where you're being taught at, again, some may use H+, plus, uh, as an oversimplification of H3O+. Plus. We're going to use H3O+, plus in this class, because we introduced that in step 5 right there. So if you put H plus in there on your test, I'll be like, why is your H plus there? Because it's not done here. That means you're not following the steps that your, your coach, your coach taught you a specific way to do it. When I'm coaching baseball and softball, if I teach people to shift a particular way, if there's a ball hit to left field and I want my right fielder because they got nothing to do but pick their nose and I want them to sprint behind first base, you know, maybe it's hit to the shortstop or hit to third base at the level I teach, Usually they miss the first baseman, <laughs> right? Whether it's softball or baseball. Um, and the ball goes flying, and then the other coach has their person steal second, steal third. Sometimes they get a home run, hit to the shortstop. I'm like, oh, please shoot me now. So I always teach my right fielder to, to boogie as fast as they can. If the ball's hit away from them, shift behind first base. My daughter used to do that all the time. She was super fast, super smart. She'd whip back there. Somebody would over, you know, Every once in a while, people, somebody would overthrow or miss the first baseman, and the coach, the other coach, would send them to second base. My daughter or anybody playing right field would be back there. They'd get that overthrown ball, whip it to second base, and several times we threw them out at second base. Hey, playing smart. But if you do something different than what your coach teaches you, then they get a home run, an infield home run on you. So you want a home run on your test? Do what I'm teaching you. Yay! All right. Now, while I was jibber-jabbering, you finished this problem, right? Ha-ha! All right. <laughs> Distraction tactic. Balance the following in acidic solution. The last one we did was basic solution. The only difference is step five. Everything else is exactly the same. We're going to use the hydronium ion to balance the charge instead of the hydroxide ion. That's the only difference! It's exactly the same! Predicting products, though, you got to make sure you're, you're looking at the redox table right. Now, of course, I was being a boogerhead. I didn't give you the products. So we got the permanganate ion again. Last time we had it in basic solution. This time it's acidic solution. We're going to get a different product. And then what is that, oxalic acid? So let's take a look. And I did tell you it's acidic solution because we had to because we need to know whether our permanganate's in acidic solution or whether our permanganate's in basic. So we're in acidic solution, so we're going to get the uh, manganese 2 ion and then the oxalic acid in acidic solution will give us carbon dioxide gas. Right? Arrows point the right way. So we're going to get Mn2 plus aqueous plus CO2 gas. Remember, step one, are you in acidic or basic solution? Step two, predict your products unless they're given to you. Step three, let's separate them into the half reactions, balance them, equalize the charges, and recombine them. Specific instructions are here. They're right there. Ready? What are we going to do? We're going to label the oxidation numbers. You screw that up, you're toast. Right about there, you're going to vomit all over yourself on the test. All right. <laughs> and if, you screw, if you're not good at seven, go back to step one. I recommend you just finish the test. And if you finish the test, then go back to step one. Don't waste your time. If you didn't get it right on seven, if your hydrogens don't balance, just ah, cry a little bit, move on. All right. And let's label our electron transfer. I always like to combine one and two together. Let's label our oxidation numbers. Please try it before I do. Pause your video, give it a shot, see how you do. We had the permanganate last. Remember, we got MnO2 last time in basic solution. So any oxygen in a compound, we're going to label negative 2. 2 times 4 is negative 8, so 7 minus 8 is minus 1. So the manganese has to be a plus 7 in the permanganate. So it's just a fantastic oxidizing agent. This is my oxidizer. Beautifully, beautiful oxidizing agent. In our oxalic acid, hydrogen, when bound to a non-metal, is always a minus 1. Bound to a metal is a positive 1. Oxygen will always be a minus 2 in a compound, unless it's peroxide. Now, I'm gonna, I won't give you peroxides on tests and exam. Uh, so, let's see. So, that's a negative 8. 4 times negative 2. That's a plus 2. So, what times 2 gives you a positive 6? 
All right, so two times three is six, plus two is eight, cancels out the negative eight because this is a neutral species. If you're struggling with oxidation numbers, you have to go back and review that from first semester of general chemistry. It's imperative you get those. Ooh, I like, I like monatomic ions. I got one manganese ion. So in that case, the charge is the oxidation number, right? Over here, we're gonna assign the oxygen a minus two. That's neutral, so the carbon has to be a plus four to cancel out the two negative two oxygens. So I've got all my oxidation numbers. Now let's, let's connect those together. Let's get our reduction and our oxidation. So this will be my reducer. You don't really have to label oxidize a reducer, but the electrons are gonna be going that direction. Manganese is going from seven to a two. So that means it must be gaining five electrons in that reduction. So when we do the half reaction, we'll have the five electrons on the left-hand side. Here, the carbon, each carbon, even though we got two carbons, don't worry about that yet. We Each carbon's going from a three to a four. So let's connect those together. And to go from three to four, you have to lose one electron. So we're losing one electron in the oxidation of the carbons. Right? So electrons are going from the reducer to the oxidizer. The manganese is being reduced. The carbon's being oxidized. So let's look at our two half reactions. So we've got the oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction. So here's our reduction half reaction. I'll write them on here and then we'll split them up on separate board. We've got the permanganate ion. I'm going to take the states out and put them back in when we do our simplified equation. Plus the five electrons. I screwed that up on the last uh, video, right? <laughs> Caught it pretty quick. Mistakes are okay as long as you understand and catch it. And we're going to get the Mn2 plus on that side. So going from a 7 to a 2, that's why we're gaining five electrons. Apparently I like my reduction half reactions in blue and my oxidation in green. So my oxidation half reaction and I try to teach it, uh, I like teaching steps and patterns where it's just the same thing. Oh, step one, step two. You're like a, a robot on the test. Step one, do this. Label oxidation numbers. Step two, connect them. Step three, split them into half reactions. Step four, balance all atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Step five, balance the charge. Step six, balance the oxygen. And you're just like a robot. Do this, do this, do this. Finish A, go to B. Finish B, go to C. Right? Mr. Roboto or Mrs. Roboto on the test. We're going to take the oxalic acid, H2C2O4, and that's oxidizing, so the electrons will be on the right-hand side. It's going to carbon dioxide plus one electron. Now, obviously, we're going to have to balance these carbons. That's a little bit different. We didn't do that last time. Do me a favor. Do the reduction half reaction for me. See if you can balance that. I'll do that one first on the separate board. And follow these steps. See if you can do it. See if you can do it. Hopefully yours is more complete than mine. Ha -ha! Here we go. So that's our unbalanced reduction half reaction, right? Magnus is picking up five to go from seven to two. So we feel good about the electron. All right. So we just did step three. We wrote the separate half reactions. Now balance all atoms other than oxygen, hydrogen. No hydrogens, no big deal. Don't worry. Because good luck doing this by inspection. You got four oxygens. There's none on that side. What do I do? Do you put an OH minus, HO plus, water? You don't know. So that's why you can't do these by inspection. You have to follow the steps. But I've got one manganese on both sides. So step four, yay, I can skip that one. Let's go to step five, balance the charge. Now we're in acidic solution. We're going to use hydronium ion. Last example, we were in basic solution and used hydroxide. Let's look at the overall charge. I've got one permanganate for a minus one charge and five electrons, which are minus one. So that's a negative five from the electrons, negative one from the permanganate. So I have a negative six charge total on my reactant side on the left. Over here, I only have one manganese two. So I have a total of plus two. As far as I can tell, negative six does not equal positive two. Basic math helps. I've been teaching my son how to play uh, some quick math by teaching him cribbage, right? Getting 15s, 31s, those kinds of things. Uh, so games are a wonderful way to teach kids math, playing Monopoly and things like that. Great. Why are we talking about this? Here we go. I need to add hydronium ions to the more negative side, right? So what minus 6 equals positive 2? Well, it should be 8, right? 8 minus 6 is 2. So since the hydronium ion is a positive 1 charge, right? positive one charge, 
I need to add eight hydronium ions to the left hand side. We'll do states later. Don't forget the charge. If you forget the charge, this whole thing just goes tank real fast. So add eight hydroniums to the left hand side. That's an ugly looking five there. Now, let's double check. Now, you don't have to do all this stuff. You can just do that in your head. I don't care. But I now have 8 times 1 is 8, minus 1 is 7, minus 5, boop, is plus 2, equals plus 2. Successful step number 5. Now we can go to step 6. Balance the oxygen atoms using our favorite molecule. Mine's actually N2O, but that's beside the point. Here we go. I have zero oxygen atoms on that side, right? There are no oxygen atoms here. And in there, we balance the charge. You don't have to write this stuff down. I just like to do that if you're reviewing your notes going, why did he add the hydroniums? I was balancing charge, step five. How many oxygen atoms do I have here? None there. I got four plus eight. I have 12 oxygen atoms on my reactant side. Everybody agree? 12 does not equal zero. I was going to put zero oxygen atoms, but it would look like, like OO. That means I need to add water to the side with fewer oxygen. So I need to add how many water molecules. If each water molecule gives me one, I would need 12 waters on the right-hand side, correct? Let's do that. So let's take our eight hydroniums plus the permanganate, plus the five electrons on the left-hand side, giving us the Mn2 plus plus 12 waters. Let's look at our oxygen atoms now. Eight plus four is 12 oxygen atoms. Everybody agree? Zero plus 12, I have 12. That's the whole point of step six, to balance the oxygens. So we're good. So the charge is balanced. Oxygens are balanced. Now let's go to step seven. Check the hydrogens. If we did everything right, the hydrogen should be good to go. Right? So I've got eight times three. That's usually where I screwed up. Eight times three is 97. Eight times three is what, 24? So I have 24. And you go, please, Bohr, please, Heisenberg, please, Joule. Let those equal each other. None there. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 equals 24. I go, yes! Halfway there. I know I'm good, so I can move on uh, to the other half reaction. So go ahead and do the oxidation half reaction and see if you get what I get. And then we'll recombine them in step 8 and uh, simplify the equation. So let's put up the oxidation half reaction. Same thing, same thing, same steps. This now has a new trick to it. The, I'm going to point this out, red flag it, whatever you got to do, dog ear it. You can't really dog ear a video, but anyway, you get the point. Maybe you can. Maybe there's some weird techie function where you can dog ear something. This is where the number one mistake is. Number two mistake is probably screwing up the oxidation numbers. But the number one mistake is the fact that the atoms, the element that's being oxidized or reduced, in this case, the carbon's going from a plus three to a plus four, there's two here and one there. That means step four. We haven't had to worry about step four yet. Now we do, and that's the number one place where people screw up. So if you're really having a hard time and step seven's not working out where you're checking those hydrogens, go back and take a look at the element that's oxidizing and reducing and see if it's the same on both sides. If it isn't, that's probably where you screwed it up. Let's do it. So we already did one and two. We did three. Now we're going to do step four, balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen. So let's take a look. Uh, so I'm not worried about the hydrogen. There isn't any on that side. Don't worry about the oxygens, but notice the two carbons and one carbon. Whoa, do you see that? So we've got one carbon atom here. And whoop, I can count two carbon atoms there <laughs> and one carbon atom there. Math. All right, those are not equal to each other. So do you agree I need to put a two there? Let's do that. Now, obviously, it'd be easy just to stick it in there, but I'm going to go step by step. 
So let's go H2, C2O4, going to 2CO2. Right here is where the number one mistake is. They don't account for adjusting the electrons. It says in step four, says in step four, uh, if the atom is that being oxidized or reduced, keep the electrons balanced. We, would you all agree we're going from a plus three to a plus four? So each carbon atom is losing one electron. Each carbon atom is losing one. But if there's two carbon atoms and each is losing one, that's a total of two electrons being lost. Right there is the number one mistake people make. They double the carbons, but they forget to double the electrons. If I had three carbons here and I put a three there, I'd put a three there. So it had, you look at the number of atoms of that element being oxidized or reduced and multiply that by the number of electrons per atom to get the total number of electrons, in this case being lost in an oxidation half reaction. So now I have two carbon atoms, two carbon atoms. That's the danger and the blessing of step four. Now we can go to step five. It would help if that wasn't upside down. <laughs> Let's balance the charge. You might not need this now. Balance the charge. We're in acidic solution. So we're going to use the hydronium ion to balance the charge. Let's look at the charges. That's neutral. So that's a zero. Carbon dioxide's neutral, so that's zero. But I got two electrons, right? I got two electrons there. Hydroniums are positive. So I need to add them to the more negative side. So I need to add two hydronium ions to the right-hand side to cancel out that to make it equal to zero. So let's do that. Let's take our oxalic acid. Let's take our two carbon dioxides, two electrons, and we're going to add two hydronium ions because it's an acidic solution. Now let's recalculate our charge. We got a zero on that side. Zero, minus two, positive two. Zero equals zero. Yay, happiness. Let's go to step six. Balance the oxygen atoms using water again. We've heard that before. The only difference was step four in this one. We, our carbons weren't uh, balanced. Well, let's look at the number of oxygens. I've got four. Would you agree? I have four oxygen atoms on the left-hand side. Right there, four times one is four. Two times two is four. Two times one is two. I have six oxygen atoms on the right-hand side. And four does not equal six. Darn! We have to add waters to the side with fewer oxygens. There's fewer oxygens on this side. Since there's one oxygen per water, I have to add two water molecules to the left-hand side. So I'm going to take two waters plus the oxalic acid, giving me the two carbon dioxides plus the two electrons. There's a lot of twos in this one. Now let's double check and make sure our oxygens are actually balanced. Two times one is two plus four, so I have six oxygen atoms. Two times two plus two, I have six oxygen oxygen atoms. I just had the sudden urge to watch the Umbrella Academy. Weird. All right. Anyway, good show, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Anything with time travel is awesome. Let's do step seven. We balance our oxygen. Step seven, check your charge. Check your charge. Uh, not your charge. Check your hydrogens. I'm pointing right at it. Check the hydrogen atoms. If we did it right, those should match. How many hydrogens we got? Two times two is four. Plus two, is that six hydrogen atoms there? Hope I don't screw up my basic math. Uh, there's no hydrogens there, none there. Two times three is six. Six hydrogens. And you go, yes! <laughs> and if those didn't equal each other, go back. You probably screwed that up right there. You probably forgot to adjust your electrons because the carbon is the actual species being oxidized here. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to erase this board. I'm going to put up the uh, balanced oxidation half reaction, balanced reduction half reaction, and we'll move on to step eight, where we got to make sure that the electrons match. Jump ahead of me if you can. Here we go. I have rewritten them side by side. Let's focus in on step eight again, the electrons. 
we need to balance the total number of electrons lost has to equal the total number gained. That's the point of step eight. It's hard to say that one step's more important than the other because if you screw up one step, the rest just go down the toilet, right? You ever get a swirly in grade school? Oh, they suck. It's good to be fast. Let's look at our electrons here. This is, to me, the most important step, but every step's important. I've got two electrons on the right-hand side of my oxidation amp reaction. I got five electrons on the left-hand side for my reduction. Five does not equal two. If I add these together, I'd end up with three electrons on the left-hand side. Can't have any electrons left over. The whole point is to cancel them out. Why am I speaking with a weird accent? Here we go. What's the common multiple between two and five? 10. So what times five gives us 10? I need to multiply this baby by two. Two times five would give me 10 electrons on the left-hand side. What times two gives me 10? Five. So I need to multiply this whole thing by five, and that'll give me two times five, 10 electrons on the right. 10 electrons on the right will cancel out 10 electrons on the left. But you have to multiply the whole enchilada by two and the entire enchilada by five in the two half reactions. So let's rewrite both half reactions. I'm going to pause it. You can go ahead and do it. Well, yeah, it takes me a while to do this. So you go ahead and do it. I'll write it myself. I'm going to take two times that, two times that, two times that. So I'm going to put two of those, 10 of those, 16 of those, two of those, and 24 waters times five in the oxidation. I'll get five oxalic acids. Two times five is 10 waters, 10 CO2s, 10 electrons, and 10 hydroniums. Do that for Let's see if we got the same thing, all right? So multiply everything by two. So two of those, two times five is 10, two times eight is 16, two times one is two, two times 12 is two. Over here, multiply everything by five. Five times one is five, five times two is 10, five times two is 10, five times two is 10, and five times two is 10. Those are, now again, when we recombine them, remember the 10 electrons, will cancel out the 10 electrons. So let's take, let's do the overall equation. Do that for me. Overall equation. And if you can skip this step in your head, go for it. And if you can just go right to the simplified one, you're good to go. Let's take everything on the left, the two permanganates, the 10 electrons, the 16 hydroniums, the five oxalic acids and the 10 waters, they all go on the left-hand side. And on the product side, we're going to get the two manganese, two ions, the 24 waters, the 10 carbon dioxides, the 10 electrons, and the 10 hydroniums. Boom. And then cancel things out on both sides. So I'm going to go rewrite that real quick and be right back. If you can skip it, go right to the uh, simplified overall equation and pop the states in. Go for it. All right, hope you got that. Again, we are doing step nine. We're recombining the half reactions to get an overall equation. And then we're going to simplify that by canceling out like species on both sides and then double check the overall charge in step 11. So I wrote everything on the left, the two permanganates, the 10 electrons, the 16 hydroniums, the five oxalic acids and the 10 waters, everything on the left. On the right hand side, I got my two manganese, two ions, my 24 waters, the 10 CO2s, 10 electrons and 10 hydroniums. Let's simplify. See the 10 electrons here? 10 electrons there, Bye bye That's the whole point. I got 16 hydroniums on the left-hand side and 10 hydroniums on the right. So like 10x and 16x, right? So subtract 10 hydroniums from both sides. That goes to zero. And that goes to a six, right? Subtract 10, 16 minus 10 leaves you with six hydroniums on the left-hand side. Uh, I got waters, commonly water, hydronium, hydroxides, those are going to cancel out. So I got 10 waters on the left-hand side and 24 waters on the right-hand side. So let's subtract 10 from both sides. So the 10 minus 10 leaves you with zero waters there. 24 minus 10 gives you 14. We'll have 14 waters left over on the right-hand side. We simplified. Let's Now don't leave a mess like that for me. Come on, guys. I have old eyes. I can't see all that garbage. So rewrite it, and again, you can skip this and go right to it if you trust, you can track it all in your brain. Write the overall simplified equation. Let's check the charges on both sides. So I'm going to rewrite that real quick and be right back with you. 
Should have got something that looks like this. I prefer, just me personally, that you box your final answer. That's a way on an exam to say, Professor, Professor, please grade that. Right? And make sure you pop your states on there. In my exams, I'll always have one point for putting the states back in. Have them in the very beginning, leave them out, put them back in at the very end. Everything should be balanced. Uh, and at this point, you shouldn't have to check your hydrogens and oxygens. Check your overall charge. If those don't, if the charge on the reactant side doesn't equal the charge on the product side, you forgot something or something looked weird. But in step seven, when you checked it with the two half reactions, uh, you, your hydrogens and oxygens should be good. So let's look at the overall charge. Two permanganates and minus one, that's a minus two. Six hydroniums and plus one's a plus six, and the oxalic acid is neutral. So six minus two would be plus four on my reactant side. The total charge is a plus four on the reactant side. Let's look at the product side. Two of the plus two manganese, that'll be four. Water's neutral, carbon dioxide's neutral, so those are zero. So four plus zero plus zero equals positive four on the product side. Yay, happy face. Show those teeth on the test. Yes, I got you. And move on with a great degree of confidence and know you got a whole bunch of points. These are big pointers on tests. You guys rock. Let's get into some crazy stuff now.